Hi, let's now see lecture number 39 of uh, Ultimate Python course. So, in this lecture, we are going to see about tuples. Okay. So, don't write the notes, slides are given in the description and watch my video at 2x speed, I'll generally be very slow. So, tuples are immutable. Immutable means once you create it, you cannot change it. If you are trying to add something to it, then a new tuple will be created. And it is ordered. Ordered means you can access the elements by using the indices. Okay. And elements can be of any type. So the elements can be strings, the elements can be integers, the elements can be floats, nested tuples, dictionaries, or anything can be present inside a tuple. Okay. So unlike list, it cannot be changed. So once you have a tuple, it will not be changed. If you try to change it, a new tuple will be created. Okay. So it is useful for storing fixed collection of data. If you already know that size of the data or the, if the data doesn't change, if it is fixed, then going for tuple is a good thing. Otherwise, go for list. Okay. If you have to change it. Okay. <clears throat> so tuples are ordered, indexed, unchangeable, and it allows duplicate values. Now, the elements have a specific order. When I say order, the elements will have a specific order. For example, tuple equal to 10, 20, 30, it has an order of 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. Right. Now, when you try to print t of 1, then 20 will be printed. And you can access the elements using an index. In a tuple, you can access the elements using an index. Right. For example, this, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So, t of 0 means apple. And it is unchangeable. If you try to change a tuple, it will say, it will say that it, you cannot change it. There will be an error, right? So, you have to create a different tuple and insert it over there. For example, if t of 1 is already 20 and if you try to make it 4, t of 1 equal to 4, it will raise a type error. It will say that tuple objects does not support item assignment. Tuple objects does not support item assignments. Okay. So here tuple object does not assign uh, support assignments. You have to create a new tuple and it will allow duplicate values. For example, you have 30 here and 30 here. It will not give you any error. It is not a set. It is a tuple, right? So duplicates are allowed. Now, getting the length of a tuple, you can use length function. If you have a tuple t, let us say there is a tuple t, and if you want to get the length of the tuple, then you can use length function, len of t, then you are going to get the length. So, in this case, the length is 6. Now, there are two ways to create a tuple, using the parenthesis, using the tuple constructor. So, directly using the parenthesis, you can create it. For example, if I say tuple equal to parenthesis, a new tuple is created. That is empty. So, that is where you are seeing empty tuple. And if you see the type of T, that is going to show you as a tuple. Or you can give elements also inside the parenthesis. For example, inside the parenthesis, if you give all the elements, all of them will be taken as elements of the tuple. Now, if you try to print T, everything will be printed the way that you have given it. And if you see type of T, it will say it is a tuple. Type is a tuple. Now, you can understand that inside a tuple, there are integers, there are strings, there are lists, there is, there is inside a tuple also, nested tuple. Right? All these are possible. You can also create a tuple using the built-in iterate, in built-in tuple. Okay? So, you can pass an iterable. Okay, so you can use a tuple and you can pass an iterable like a list or a string and a tuple will be created. For example, if you say t equal to tuple, then if you see the print t, that will be empty tuple printed. And if you see type of t, it will be a tuple. Now, for example, if you have this Ravindra, are the elements let us say these are all the elements which are present in the tuple then positive indexing will work from 0 to len minus 1 8 minus 1 which is 7 
negative indices will work from minus 1 to minus 8. You can use positive indices or negative indices to access the elements of a tuple. Now positive indices start from 0 and increase up to len minus 1. For example here this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. If you try to print t of 2 then 30 is printed. Now coming to negative indices, this is minus 1, this is minus 2, this is minus 3, this is minus 4, this is minus 5, this is minus 6. Okay, when you try to put minus 2, t of minus 2, then it will print 1, 2. You can also do slicing in tuple. Now slicing happens like this, tuple, square brackets, start index, end index and step size. By default, start index is 0. By default, end index is length of t. By default, step size is 1. Let's see some examples here. So, if you write tuple slicing column, that's it. You are not writing anything, which means you have to print from starting to ending in steps of 1, which means entire tuple will be printed. For example, if you write like, like this, column 0, column 2, it means that you are starting from 0, starting will be 0 and then don't touch 2, don't go till 2. That is the meaning of it, right? So 10 and 20 and the step will be 1. So 10 and 20 will be printed. If you give colon colon minus 1, which means step size as minus 1, then it will start printing from the ending. So from 50 it will print till 10. From 50, from 50 it will print till 10. Okay. Now, if you say starting address, starting index is 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you say starting index is 4, which means here, and the ending index is 2, which means here, and the step size is minus 1, then it will not touch 2. It will print 4 and 3 in that order, in the reverse order, 50 and 40. Now creating a tuple with one element, you have to be careful there. You have to give a comma, otherwise it will not be taken as a tuple. For example, you have to if you have only one element in a tuple, you have to give 10 comma, otherwise it will give you error. Okay. If you give 10 comma, then it will take it as a tuple, and if you see the type, it will take it as a tuple. Now, if you directly give 10 without giving a comma, then it is going to say uh it, it, it is going to take it as an integer and if you see the type of t, it will say int. Okay. So, without a comma, it is taking as an integer. With a comma, it is taking as a tuple. Now, you don't need to specify a comma when you are passing a list as a single element in the tuple, which means if you are passing a list, then you don't have to put a comma. Okay. Or any iterable, you don't have to put a comma over there. Okay. So if you, are if you are writing like this and if you are putting a tuple uh, list inside it, now if you print it, it is going to print as one element. And if you see the type of T, it is going to take as tuple. Now concatenation of tuples. You can concatenate tuples together, but then a new tuple will be created, not the original ones. For example, if you have T1 equal to something, T2 equal to a tuple, now, if you concatenate both of them by using plus operator, it will create a new tuple and it will assign all the elements to the new tuple, not the old ones. For example, if T1 is at memory address 1000 and if T2 is at memory address 1100, now if I combine them two by using plus, then a new tuple and object is created and the tuple object will be created at a different location, different memory location. Right. So if you have tuple T1 equal to A, B, C, if you print the ID of tuple, you are going to get some ID. So this is the ID you got. Now, if you have a tuple T2 and print it, it is printed and its ID is printed. So both of their IDs are different because they are different objects. Now, when you do tuple T3 equal to T1 plus T2, and if you print t3, it will it will get it will give you t1 plus t2. Now, if you try to print the ID of t3, you are going to get this. ID of t3 is going to be this. Okay, which is a different number. So a new object is created. 
Now nested tuples can be there. A tuple which contain other tuples is a nested tuple. Okay. So you can have inside a tuple multiple tuples. Now if you print uh, T4, let us say T4 is containing two tuples. If you print it, you can see that there are two tuples inside it that is allowed. You can go to any levels of nesting. Now accessing elements in a nested tuple. When you have a nested tuple, for example, we have T1 and T2, two separate tuples. Now you have made a nested tuple from T1 and T2 as T3. Now T3 will contain these two tuples. This one will be at index 0, this one will be at index 1. Now if you do 0 of 2, so this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So this element will be printed, right? So this is this element. Tuple T3 is this one and 0 of zero of 2 means this one. This is 0, this is 1 and this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. 0 of 2 means this one. Now, how do you loop through a tuple? There are various ways. So, one way is you can say for i in t, print i. Okay, whatever i it is, it need not be an integer. For i in t, print i. Then you are going to print all the elements one by one. You can also use range. You can also use range and length. For example, i in the range of length of t. So what does that mean? Range will generate from 0 to length minus 1. So t of i means all the elements will be printed. See, length of t. Range of length of t means it will start from 0 and it will go till length, length of t minus 1 length of t minus 1 now i will be 0 initially then 1 then 2 then 3 so on it will go to length minus 1 so you are going to see 10 20 30 and ravi now using enumerate so you know what why enumerate is used right so enumerate is used to add the indices right before the elements now you can use enumerate we have already seen it you can give any iterable to it and you have to say what, what, what is the starting number. From that number, the indices will be given. Okay. For example, if you have a tuple like this, 10, 20, 30, Ravi. And if you write enumerate of T. Now, enumerate of T is going to give you a set of tuples. It is going to give you tuples one by one. And uh, first tuple will be like 0, 10. Now, we are unpacking it. So first number will be 0, second number will be 10. That is unpacking. So enumerate will give you tuples and we are unpacking tuples of two elements and using these two elements, we are unpacking it. So that is why we are getting 0, 10, 120, 230 and 3 Ravi. Okay. Now you can also say start. You need not always start with 0. You can say a start number. Then it will be starting from that number. 500, 501, 502, 503. Now you can use zip function to combine multiple tuples. Right. So earlier we have used zip on lists also. The same thing. So iterable 1, iterable 2. You can have any number of iterables. It will combine them. Right. So for example, if you have these two tuples. And if I use zip. Then what happens is. If I, if, I, if I have these two tuples and if I use zip, then tuples will be created by taking one element from here and another element from here, which means 10 comma a. What will be the output of zip? Tuple. Right. Now tuples will be created one after the other. So each one is unpacked. So each tuple is unpacked here using x will be 10 and y, y will be a. So therefore, we are getting 10a, 20b, 30c, which means we get three tuples. All of them will be unpacked into x and y, one after the other. That is why we get 10a, 20b and 30c. Now, if the sizes are uneven, it will always go till the lower size, which means 10, 20, 20, comma b right so these two elements will be given so which means you will get 10a in one tuple that will be unpacked into x and y right x and y will be used for unpacking now we are printing x and y that is why we are getting 10a 20b otherwise you will get tuples you have unpacked it that is why we are not getting tuples here okay fine <laughs> so if you like this video a little bit click on like if you liked it so much, 
then share it and subscribe to the channel okay and please do share it with your friends and grow the channel thank you if you want to take my gate classes we go to the website ravindrababuraula.in and you are going to see all my gate classes available there okay so coming to the classes they are all recorded why am i doing recorded why am i not doing live classes is i have thousands of students registering for my courses every year but then if i conduct a live class only 20 or 30 people will be there 20 or 30 that's it maximum is 40 i had the reason is live classes are little bit wasting your time see you cannot watch a live class at 2x speed you have to watch at the pace at which i teach generally i will be very very slow while teaching so if you can go through the live classes you can watch them at 2x speed and you can complete the syllabus very fast 400 plus hours content is there for gate and if you are going to watch them at normal pace it will take 400 hours but if you watch it at 2x speed it will take just 200 hours right so if you want any of my gate classes gate computer science or gate da the price is just 10000 rupees it is very very reasonable for the kind of quality we provide we have test series we have doubt sessions we have videos we have lecture notes for every even you don't have to write any lecture notes i will provide you lecture notes for every subject you just have to sit back watch the videos at 2x speed and revise the notes short notes will be provided long notes will be provided formulas will be written in a separate notes everything will be there provided to you you don't have to work hard and coming to if you are planning to go abroad we also have study abroad program you can go through my number my number is on whatsapp my whatsapp number is in the website if you are planning to do masters abroad that is a very good choice it is better than doing masters in india so if you are planning to go abroad we will help you out right from the from taking the passport to getting the visa visa us visa right so we will help you out in the entire process okay so do visit the website, see what is happening there. Even DSA course is there for 5,000 rupees, which is both in Python and C++, okay? So thank you so much.